Okay, so here we are at the sugar apples. Yes, this is uh, one of the, the, the Trek sugar apple plantings. This is a variety called Leah Reese. Um, and we prune it each year uh, just before it starts to leaf out naturally. So that's generally like the first week of March. We come in and we top and we hedge it. Now you can come in and prune it by hand. Um, that is of course, you know, labor intensive, but you can do it very successfully. And what you're doing is you're removing a lot of the old growth, which may be actually three or four feet out. And why do you want to remove that? Part of it is that at least in, even with our winters, you can have some, some dead shoots. I would call them shoots, not so much limbs, but dead limbs and shoots. The other thing is, is that it, you have to remember that sugar apples flower and fruit on new growth. So if you leave this big long shoot, sure, it's gonna flower and fruit along that big long shoot, uh, but actually there's no reason to have, it, it gets too crowded, right? So if, these, if I allowed these trees to, to meet, it just be way too crowded. I wouldn't get good fruit production. It wouldn't be easy to care for. So you can see I come in and we prune these trees and they're leafing back now. And uh, you can see. So what happens is the reaction to pruning is to send out new shoots and then send, start sending out flowers. So they'll start really flowering May and June. And that's when we're really gonna see a lot of the flowering. So you see this new growth, so it flowers on the new growth. And there's been some research to show that the flowering and the fruit production on wood about this size and this size is much better than, uh, than, than the flowering and the fruiting out on something that's way out. Here. So you keep them closer to the, to the farm? Yeah, the, we, the, yeah. so the, we, I take actually about two thirds of the length of this shoot off with the pruning. Oh really? Okay. Yes. It's about two thirds to one half. Uh, so if I was doing this by hand, I would have come in and cut back each individual shoot. I would have uh, removed each of these tiny little shoots and just left the, the stronger shoot. Uh, but now's not a good time. Once it leaves, it's too late, right? Um, yes and no. I mean, you could, you could do it. I wouldn't wait any longer than right now. Uh, it, it can. In fact, there is a strategy of some people coming in it came and it comes out in flowers right now. It's coming in like let's say a month or even later, coming in and pruning or stripping the leaves off and it will initiate new growth and they'll get a later flowering and fruiting. Okay. Um, how successful that is, I don't really know. I mean, I've seen them flower and fruit from doing that. Um, so these are pretty short realistically. Yes. How, how yeah. short can you keep these? Just the heights you see right here. Oh, wow. By the end of the year, well, here, this is a good example. By the time next year that I'm going to prune again, it'll be about that big. Okay. And so this is a, an example of a shoot that I took off, and you can see what's on the but ground. But typically, I mean, if you've been keeping up on your pruning, you prune yes. after you pick it. Yeah, so, you know, usually the harvest is over. Actually, the harvest goes pretty long. Um, starts usually in August, runs through August, September, certainly, um, even into October and November. Um, and I don't prune them until the spring, though. So I'll harvest, finish harvesting, let's say, in September. I don't prune them. And I wait until March 1st, or the first week of March, when they just start to send out new shoots on some of this, or, or just prior to it, and that's when I prune it. So okay. it's, a little, it's a different strategy than with mangoes and avocados. But now's the latest you would prune it. Actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you'll start seeing fruit right after mango season. You'll start seeing fruit, right? Yeah, now. yeah. Probably be starting August, September is when we'll see. Now the this sugar there's, there's seedlings again, and there's vari uh, there's grafted right. varieties. That's so right. what variety is this? This is a variety called Leah Reese. Um, is that a red one or a green it's one? It's a green one, recently named. Now one of the the characteristics of this uh, several. One is it really doesn't set a lot of fruit unless it's hand pollinated. That's a negative for a lot of people. Of course, you'd rather not have to hand pollinate. But the truth is that most of the sugar apples, whether they're green or red, trees, if they're not hand pollinated, their percent fruit set is very, very low. So I'm talking about, uh, in this case, if I don't hand pollinate this tree, I may only get one or two fruit on the tree. Some of the other greens, you may get you know, 15, 30 fruit on a tree. That's not very much fruit. If you hand pollinate, you'll get 
probably 90% fruit set. So if you, if you pollinate uh, 10 fruit, you're going to get nine fruit. 20 fruit, you're going to get 18 fruit. You see what I mean? So much, much more. The other thing about the hand pollination um, is the fruit tend to, the fruit will be symmetrical. If you allow just natural pollination, which is done by knitted doulid beetles, a lot of times the fruit's misshapen. And that's because of incomplete pollination and fertilization. Whereas if you hand pollinate, all the stigmas get fertilized and the fruit is much more symmetric. Also, the fruit tends to be larger when you hand pollinate. So there's some advantages to the hand pollination. The disadvantage, of course, is the labor and the time it takes to do it. It really doesn't take that much, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. It takes labor and time to do it. Well, how um, long would it take to pollinate something like this? Yeah, so another reason to keep the tree small is I can pollinate this tree from standing on the ground. Um, and usually the best time for sugar apples is to begin pollinating, you know, once the flowers are out, um, is you, you begin, the best pollination period during the day is from sunrise to about 11, 12 o'clock in the day. Um, and so I would come out here, I come out here with, a, and there's different methods. The simplest method is you take a little container, you walk through, you pick flowers that are in the male stage. There's two stages of flowering with sugar apples. There's the male stage and the female. You collect male flowers, flowers in the male stage. You collect the pollen. You have a little watercolor paintbrush. Then you come out uh, the next day or that morning uh, after you've collected it. And then you find flowers that are in the female stage of flowering and you pollinate them. Uh, and then you go ahead and you mark that flower either by removing a piece of the petal or something so you can identify it so you don't use it as a male <laughs> the next time. Um, so. Here, this, this, is, this is the size, this is a good size flower. These little flowers probably aren't gonna do anything. This is actually a, a more functional flower. It hasn't opened yet. It'll first open in the female stage, and then later uh, that day it'll, uh, or the next morning, will actually be in the male stage. And that's when you would collect So once the you know the stages, then how to identify them, how long would it take you personally to come here and, and pollinate a tree this size? Um, well, not all the flowers are ready to pollinate on the same day. So I usually end up visiting like this tree. I would end up visiting this tree probably four or five times. Um, and I'd probably spend, depending on how many flowers are open and ready, uh, maybe 10 minutes on this tree, 10 minutes on the next, 10 okay. minutes on the next. So it takes a little time. Okay. Yep. And, uh, so, and what you said about the pollinating, the hand pollinating, is that true for... Sugar apples, custard apple, and sour sops, or right. is it just for the sugar apples? No, not, it's not just uh, the sugar apples. Um, commercially, a lot of the uh, guanabana, or sour sops, are also hand pollinated, so that they get good fruit set, symmetrical fruit, and large fruit. Uh, I don't know really anybody that's hand pollinating commercially, I'm talking about, uh, reticulata or the custard apple. Um, but certain, and the atomoya, which we don't have much in the way of commercial atomoya, but that's another one that would benefit from hand pollination. But privately, they'd all benefit from hand pollination? Oh, yes. Privately, yes. Dooryard, certainly. If you want to have fruit in your dooryard, I would hand pollinate. It's just not going to take that long. Yeah. So you have just got to learn how to do it. Yeah, it's not hard. And in terms of... Uh, we can come out here later when they're flowering. Can we do another video on it? Yeah. Oh, we can do a video on sure. that, teacher. That'd be great. So, and is the pollinating process the same for all of them, or are they different? Um, basically the same, but it might be different time of day. Okay. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Do you have a list on your website or something about the time of them? Um, I don't. Or we'll make a video and put that in there. Yeah, we can put that in. Okay. Sure. And what about seedlings versus uh, yeah. grafted varieties on these okay. uh, sugar apples? Sugar apples are interesting. If you, you can grow trees from seed, and basically get the same variety back. Lassard Thai is a good example. Kampong Mob is a good example. The caution comes in is where you get your seed. If you get, let's say, um, let's say this is Leah Reese. So if I take fruit from this that I hand pollinated the fruit, those seeds are gonna come back and it's gonna be Leah Reese. However, if I take fruit and it was just open pollinated. In other words, there could be the parent, the other male parent could be anybody. 
I'm, I may not get, probably will not get Leah Reese back. I'll end up with a hybrid. Whether it's better or worse, hard to say. So it depends on your seed source, but they can be grown from seed and they generally uh, do come back from seed. But again, if it's in a mixed planting with a lot of varieties, you're probably not going to get back. Well, you're never going to know for sure, because even if you hand pollinate this, you could still get a seed that's not, not hand No, no. If, if this is, if, so for instance, if I was going to hand pollinate this, I would hand pollinate it. And then I would put uh, a, a little bag over this to prevent any other pollen from getting in there. Got you. So this would just be what I know. And I would self pollinate it. So I would take pollen from a, a flower on this tree that's in the male stage and pollinate a flower. But if on you this missed tree. a flower on this tree and, and, and it was not hand pollinated and you missed it, you wouldn't know. And would not know whether the seeds. So you got so, a so, good track of them. Yeah, so you could have, let's say, 30 seeds in the fruit. Well, 10 of them could be hybrids and you wouldn't know it, and 20 could be true to seed. But in general, sugar apples are usually true You can true grow to them seed. from seed. And now, I, I was somewhere recently and they had soursops, a nursery, they were growing from seed, and I'm like, why wouldn't you just do grafted? Yeah. And they, they were like, soursops are okay. I didn't. Well, and yeah, so there are a lot of soursops that people do grow them from seed. However, there are a few selections people have made that they feel are superior. And those are the ones being grafted. Now, are sugar apples and sour sops and custard apples all self-pollinating or no? No. In fact, no. In fact, really important what the pollen source is. So in general, yeah, you could self-pollinate the greens, self-pollinate the reds. Actually, actually using the pollen from the greens on the reds and the reds on the greens can sometimes be better. And certainly with Adam Moyas, Selfing an atomoya like Geffner atomoya generally is not good for fruit set. If you use pollen from the sugar apple, the green sugar apple, on the atomoya, the Geffner, good fruit set. So the pollen source is important. Is Geffner not self pollinating either? Um, like I said, it, it, you'll get some fruit set, but not as good as if you cross. What it. about uh, the star apple? The star apple, that yeah, one? Yeah, is that I really don't know enough about to be able to tell you. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, great. And I know you're doing a lot of experiments on these. Yep. Yeah. These, these different ones. What's yeah. the red? Uh, the red one's a uh, sugar apple. What's it called? Um, we have one called Kampong Mauve. Yeah. Uh, Larry Shockman, and the other one we just call Red. And red. they're they're very similar, um, and the size and the shape is very similar to the green, and the quality on the inside is very similar. It's just that it has a red, you know, a very pretty red peel. Great. Great. Uh, and uh, give us, uh, well, I'm going to put your contact information below the video. Thank you for showing us around. Our pleasure. Thank you.